Welcome back to ESA Winter 21. We are raising money for Alzheimer Funden. Links to donate can be found below the stream. We would also like to thank Koei Tecmo Europe, Twitch, and ViewSonic for sponsoring this event. And now it is time for Tiny Tim 78 running Dizzy, Prince of the Old Quill. But before I let him take things away, we did get some donations during intermission. We got $50 from Robo Sparkle saying, Hey Tim, because one good donation deserves another, and loads more if the audience has the cash to spare. Best of luck with Dizzy, it's one of my game, game series growing up for the Amiga, and I know you'll do it justice, you're really a good egg. Thank you so much. And then we also got $25 from Anonymous saying, Supporting redheads and donating for a good cause, best way to spend money. And then we got $5 from our very own Suneri saying, Hey, look, it's Tiny Tim, one of my favorite people in all of speedrunning. Good luck on the run. Can't wait for on-site events to come back and give you a big old hug. With that, I'll let you go and do your run. Thank you so much, Tally. Hello there, folks. My name is Tiny Tim 78 uh, I'm going to be doing Dizzy Prince of the Oak Folk for you today. I hope you enjoy it. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for those very generous donations, everyone. It really, really is appreciated. It's an amazing cause. So if you can spare a little bit just to put towards Alzheimer Fond, and that would be absolutely fantastic. With me, I have the one and only Digital Duck. Hello. Who is going to be helping me today on this. So we're going to get started straight away. I will give you a little bit of background as we're going through here. So we're going to get started. I'm ready on time. In three, two, one, go. Okay, so this is Dizzy Prince of the Oak Folk. It is one of the uh, Dizzy series from the early 1990s on the ZX Spectrum. And it's basically a sort of puzzle platforming game. Uh, lots of tight execution here. Uh, not a lot of glitches. Well, no glitches, really. Uh, and, yeah, it's a very, very interesting, very cartoon-themed, uh, very colourful, beautiful music for the time. Beautiful music. So I just picked up a cherry there, so I'm going to let Duck explain what the cherries are and why they're important to the run. Yeah, so throughout the game, we're going to rescue Daisy, who is Dizzy's girlfriend. Yeah, good Valentine's Day run. And uh, she wants to bake a pie, and it requires 20 cherries. So we need to find all of the cherries hidden around the, the world uh, in order to get that pie baked. It yep. is required to beat the game. It might sound like it's a uh, bonus quest, but no, nope, it is actually required. Yep, the most important thing about this game is pie. So you have to make sure that you get your cherries. Otherwise, Grand Dizzy, who we're making the pie for, would be very, very unhappy. Uh, so we need to make sure we have our pie. So grab the cherries. Every time I grab a cherry, it does actually restore me some life. I've got a little life meter in the top right hand corner there. I've also got three little dots, which are my eggs, my lives, because Dizzy is an egg. And then you've got the number is the number of cherries that I've collected. There are 20 in total required for the run. Yeah, and some, some of them can be rather deviously hidden. So we'll, we'll see most of them just laying about, but we'll also see some of them that are perhaps not in places they should be. Yeah. That's a bit of a thing with these games. Uh, and we were just discussing it before. This is probably the most uh, gregarious example of that, where you've got uh, cherries in some very strange places. Uh, so we'll see that shortly. Right, this chap here needs gold to allow me to cross the river, which I've just given him. Now, here we have the first bit of wanton vandalism in the run. I have just, if you just explain what I was doing there, Duck. Yep, so behind various scenery in the game, you'll find some cherries hidden. So we're going to be taking taking apart rails and pulling up clumps of, clumps of grass and destroying a few roofs as well. All, all in the quest for cherries. Yeah, Dizzy is, is a right vandal. He uh, loves, loves to pull things apart, so we're... Uh... But, as I say, most important thing is the pie, so you've got to get those cherries. Right, we're going down here. I've got to grab this harp. Uh, and now, this is a very, very interesting uh, sort of game. It's a very, uh, quite a popular genre in the early 90s. And again, this is a uh, ZX Spectrum game, so that's why the, the graphics are perhaps a little different to what, you're, uh, what you may be used to these days. 
but uh, it's still, for me, this was one of my favourite games growing up. I absolutely adored this game, the music. It's also a relatively, as you can tell by the time, quick game, quite a short game. Uh, it's quite a nice little sort of introduction to this sort of uh, genre, and it's, it's fantastic. So I'm just going to give... Uh, we're visiting heaven here. And we're going to give him the heart, and he's going to give us holy cheese. And if you'd explain what I'm going to do with that cheese, please, Doug. <laughs> yeah, so we, we have a... Um, we have Poogie here, or Pogi, and uh, we want to steal him. So we're going to put the cage down and put some cheese in the cage, and the Fluffle is going to go ahead and go in the cage by himself, because there's cheese in there. Yep, we have a caged Fluffle, and he's going to come in very, very handy very shortly. That purple bottle there, what's, what's that for, Duck? That's, uh, isn't, isn't, I think that's alcohol, isn't it? Isn't it a bottle of whiskey? I think it's whiskey, I'm not quite sure what it is, but we never touch it anyway. Yes. So in in a few dizzy games, there are there are various uh, items which you you can't use or you shouldn't use. I think the whiskey you can use, and if you use it, you get drunk, and you end up you end up jumping randomly. <laughs> and uh, obviously that's that's not good for a speed run. No, we'll believe it that well alone. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm making my way back over to the left hand side of the map. We have our caged fluffle now. And we're about to use him to get rid of the nasty evil troll that we saw very briefly at the beginning here. Uh, this troll is the one who kidnapped Daisy uh, and did all sorts of nasty stuff and stuck us in that prison as well at the beginning. So we drop this and Fluff Poogie goes rawr, rawr, rawr. And he uh, then chases the troll away because he's a cute little fluffle. And we're going to go up here and we're going to grab this outboard motor. Now this is the bit that I always forget because I've got to take this motor literally like two minutes and give it to somebody, but I'm always forgetting it. <laughs> give him the motor. <laughs> give him the motor. Yeah, I've got to give him the motor. Definitely got to give him the motor. Now, would you like to explain why Dizzy is changing colours here, please, Duck? Yeah, so the Spectrum is a computer released in 1982. Uh, it was very consumer grade. I think it was only £100 on release, or 125 yep. something like that. And so it's it's not very expensive, and the the way the colours are is that you can only have two different colours per eight by eight cell. And this was to save memory because if you have colour for each for like every single pixel, it uses a lot more memory. So for each each eight by eight cell, we've only got two colours, and that means that you, you have to sacrifice one of the colours if you want to put three in. Essentially. Yep, that's your uh, your fa famous or infamous uh, color clash or attribute clash, as it's called, uh, which was very much a feature of of the spectrum uh, compared to other computers of the day. And what I'm going to do there, I took a nasty little hit on those thorns, but I've used the scythe to chop them down, do a bit of weeding, and now we're in to this castle here, and we're going to be picking up a few more items here that we need because Dizzy's always busy. He's always picking stuff up, so we've got uh, a bugle there. Another item we do not need there is that little potion, and we're going to make our way over here. Now, you might want to explain about this chap, well, not totally about this chap, but a little bit about this chap, because, yeah. Yeah, so this is the evil Dizzy, and uh, he will mimic your movements left and right, but on the, on the opposite level. Uh, if you try to collect the spanner, which is an item that we do need, he will... Uh, Again, follow your movements and push the button and drop you into the water. Uh, also, you can't push the button yourself because apparently Evil Dizzy is stronger than you. Yay for vandalism again here. We've ripped up a roof tile and found a cherry. That is probably the worst cherry in the game to find. Yeah, that's, that's definitely the last one in the game I found. I couldn't, I couldn't find that one when I was playing the first time. Okay, so we've now got our tweezers in tow, and we know exactly what we're going to do with these. I'm going to take these back over here, because you may have spotted him earlier on. Uh, there is a poor lion over here, who's, uh, when we speak to him, he tells us the troll pushed him into the bushes, and he got a, a thorn in his paw. So we're now going to dethorn the lion using the tweezers here. There we go, quick tweeze. There we go, that's him done. 
Okay, ouch, yep, and we pick up that thorn. Now that thorn's very useful. I'm gonna have to be careful here. I've taken a bit more damage than I would uh, be comfortable with. Yeah, so you, you have health in this game. Um, w w walking into enemies moves your health down. So the longer you spend touching an enemy, the faster your health drains. Uh, but with with a game this short, honestly, that's that's nothing. You've got uh, lots of leeway to, to make mistakes. Yeah, and as, as I mentioned earlier as well, the cherries, every time you pick up a cherry, it gives you health back as well. So in a couple of times, you'll find there's one bit towards the end of the run where it doesn't matter if I go into it on low because there's like about four cherries in that area and I'll be on full life by the time I've picked them all up. So now this is interesting here. I can jump further this time now because those bushes are out the way. So I can jump without going down that left-hand side, which saves a little bit of time here. Now this jump here can be... There we go, got it. You can get that if you time it right. Uh, and this one like that as well. Now then, I've got to remember to place the thorn. I always forgot this during practice, so let's just do it. So we put the thorn down here. Now this is a bit I'm going to have to be really careful with my health because this bat up here can be a problem. So I'm going to take this slow here. I'm not even going to bother uh, worrying about it. I'm just going to wait. Now what happens there? If Duck can explain when I get out here. Yeah, so Tim dropped the fawn on the floor and the the evil Dizzy walked onto the fawn and died. Because apparently e evil Dizzy strong against buttons, weak against fawns. Yep. Thorny problem. So he's uh, he's gone and I've picked up the spanner. Uh, the spanner is one of the last items I actually need. Uh, we are literally towards the end of the game here. We're on to the last couple of uh, couple of sections. So all I have to do now is I've got to take this spanner and I've got to go all the way back because that's what you do in a game like this. You go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Because he gets plenty of mileage. Right, okay. Ooh, bit tight on that bat. There we go. So I'm heading all the way back over to the left-hand side of the map here. And we're going to use this spanner. Boat behave, boat behave. Yeah, perfect. We're going to use the spanner in the... Uh, so can you maybe say a little bit more about the rest of the series here, Duck, quickly, while we're going back? Yeah, so this is actually the sixth game in a, a currently eight-game series. The, uh, the most recent game was released just at the end of last year. Um, they, they're all more or less the same thing. It's, it's you, you, you explore a world, you use items, you solve puzzles. Um, you, you have a whole cast of characters, so that there's... Dizzy and Daisy, which are the, the main two you see here, but we've also got Dozy and Dylan and Grand Dizzy and Dora and basically there's there's a whole story and, and cast of characters. This is this is relatively a short uh, foray in, into the series. It's prob probably a good introduction actually if you're not overly familiar with it. Yep, made a bit of a mess of the joke book there. No, you forgot Denzel! Can't forget Denzel. Denzel. I, I forgot Denzel. <laughs> you forgot Denzel, but no. I forget Denzel. The, the characters are all very. They're, they're, they're quite stereotypical, but they're, they're all because again, early nineties. But they were. It, it's a fun game, and as I say, I grew up with this series, and I absolutely adore it. This game is is one of my favourites. It's such a such a fun little game, and as Duck was saying, it's a nice little introduction. If you've never played a game like this before, then th this is quite a good a good one to to start with, and it's it is fun. Yeah, and this, this is probably the easiest one as well, which is definitely a good thing because the dizzy, dizzy games can get very hard. They're not easy. <laughs> I mean, this one is the easiest one, definitely. Uh, the the rest, they, they range from okay to pretty nightmare. Uh, right. They range from okay to spellbound dizzy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Spellbound Dizzy is the one I, I, I run, I speed run most of the games in the series, not all of them. I'm working my way through them uh, because some of them, some of the bigger ones, uh, Spellbound Dizzy uh, is one. And fun, uh, you may have heard of Fantastic Dizzy on uh, Genesis. Can I mention that, Doug, quickly? Yes, since that, it comes up a lot. That was that was more or less a, uh, a compilation title. Um, in, or, in order to make. Because, because the Mega Drive, obviously, much bigger platform, much larger memory. They decided to make one big game for the Mega Drive, which combines all of the different elements of the original games. 
and uh, yeah, because of that, it's very long and very difficult. Yes, it's. I've never actually played it, uh, and I get asked a lot, "Oh, you're going to do Fantastic Dizzy?" I'm like, "Yes, eventually," but it's it's kind of down on the list because uh, it, it, it's 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 great when you find a series that you can connect with, you can get into. Certainly in terms of speedrunning, I've only been speedrunning a couple of years, but I, I absolutely love them. These games here, I like them because they're down to execution. There, there isn't a lot of fancy tricks or anything. It's down to your movement. It's down to hitting the jumps in the right place. And that's what I like. It's a good challenge. And you can come back to it as well. It's something you're always going to be uh, challenged by. Uh, and that's what I absolutely love. So we are now actually on the final stretch. Uh, would you like to explain what's going to happen at the end here then, please, Doc? Yeah, so we've, we've got the key to the castle. Um, we've, we've been anointed a prince by the king, and that means we can kiss the princess, the, the sleeping daisy, and wake her up. The, so, again, it's a nice nice Valentine's Day <laughs> ending. The, the dialogue is fantastic. If you try ki kissing daisy before you become a prince, which is possible, uh, you get a bit of dialogue saying, you kiss daisy and nothing happens. You kiss Daisy again, nothing happens. You kiss Daisy a third time, and your lips are getting tired. <laughs> yeah, there's actually a lot of that in the uh, in the Dizzy series. If you try to repeat actions that clearly don't work, you will usually get some some clever dialogue, like mo mocking you for continually trying to do the same thing over and over again. Okay, we are nearly finished. Uh, I'm gonna call time very very shortly here when I get into the right place so thank you so much everyone for uh, watching I hope you have enjoyed uh, keep those donations coming in we want to have Amigo as our Pokemon trainer by the way thank you Robo Sparkle so we need to make sure that that happens so if you can do that that would be amazing and uh, we're just about finished I'll call you when time is there's a little bit of dialogue before the end so we're going to use pick up the last cherry there we go we have 20 we're going to use the rusty key to open the door give, give daisy a good old valentine's day smooch and we are going to get transported by bird yeah bird and we're actually going to see grand dizzy he's the only other character that appears in the game the only other member of the yoke folk who appears in the game there he is and he wants his pie so we have found his pie and time there we go. Okay. Thank you very much indeed, folks. I hope you enjoyed the run. GG. And we got so many donations in while you were running. So I'm just going to try and catch up on them real quick. Uh, we got $10 from Big the Dave saying, Tim, I hope you're doing all white. I'm sure you... I'm sure you shall do fine. Your runs are always excellent. I've labored this yoke enough and poached enough of your time. Good luck. <laughs> and then we also have five dollars from Paisy saying good luck on the run Tim and then we have five dollars from Anonymous saying so excited for this run so might say I'm dizzy with excitement have a good run Tim good luck you are awesome thank you so much <laughs> And we have $20 from Race Pro UK there's no message on this one but thank you nonetheless Oh, thank you. And then we have an anonymous do donation as well for $50. And this one goes to a couple incentive, including the Amigo one. So we're definitely covered on that front by the looks of it. We got $25 from the gopher saying, you guys also rock. And then uh, we have $15 from Critical Android. This one is going in for one of our later runners, Tin. And he's saying, Tin, I can't help but notice you're not running Castlevania Judgment. I thought we had an agreement you were going to play the best game ever made for this run. Oh, well, I guess this game is good, too. Thanks for all you do for your community and charities. Hashtag sheep. So, yeah, wow, thank you so much for all those donations. That was insane. Do you have any shout-outs you would like to do before we let you go? Yeah, can I just say thank you so much. Thank you so much for all those donations. That is absolutely stunning. Uh, I, I'm literally sitting here going, I mean, that is that is brilliant. Thank you so much. Remember, it all goes towards Alzheimer's Fondant. It's such an amazing cause. It's, it's very personal to me. 
uh, because my my grandmother did have did suffer from Alzheimer's and she did die a few years ago. She passed away a few years ago, and it's a very very important cause to me personally. And I absolutely love uh, the fact that I'm able to help. I'm able to help support and and raise money for such an amazing cause. Everybody just being here watching uh, i can't thank you enough shout outs also to esa thank you so much for letting me run again at your event i absolutely love it every single time uh duck my friend thank you so much for the wonderful commentary as always no problem tally you were absolutely fantastic as a host as well uh can i just say if anybody's enjoyed the run please please feel free to look me up uh have a little look on uh, twitch.tv forward slash tiny tim 78 and uh i'm i'm fairly regular streamer won't be this week because i'm uh, quite busy with with helping out with the esa stuff but uh I, i'm i'm around i'm around i do this sort of thing i do with casual games do amiga games as well amiga 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 for pokemon trainer uh, yeah, I'm going to shut up now and go away. But thank you so much, folks, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the marathon. Thank you so much again. All right. Well, one final thing to, before I let you go, because we did get another donation, $35 from RDV versus the world. Hey, Tim, always a pleasure to catch you run rooting for you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you so much. And with that, we should be getting ready to set up because we have more amazing runs coming up. Next will be Tasmania, run by Grumpmeister. So we will be taking a quick intermission, so make sure to stretch and get some of the drink. And we will be right back with more speedruns. <laughs> 